Aleyküm selam ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuhu. Elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah ma ba'd. Uh, one of the things that the people who try to criticize the Quran and try to pick out faults in the Quran uh, is that they try and use the ayah from Surah Al-Kahf, ayah number 86 from chapter number 18 uh, about Dhul-Qurnayn. Dhul-Qurnayn, hatta idha balaga maghrib al-shamsi wajadaha taghrubu fi aynin hamiyya until he reached the west. Uh, and he reached the place of the sun setting, meaning the west. And this is the translation I'm looking at. He found it setting in a spring of black, muddy, hot water. Now, the objection is, is that how can the sun set in hot water? That doesn't make any sense. Now, in order for us to understand uh, what it means by uh, <coughs> excuse me we have to go back to the tafsir and when we find the tafsir we will then clearly see that sometimes the allegations that are made against the Quran against our religion either they don't have context or <coughs> excuse me they are quite clear in its reference I mean we can clearly understand what it means but they're trying to pick out Mistakes that are not there. So the question is, how can the sun set in a ain in hamia? Now, ain in hamia, ain refers to a spring, and a hamia refers to a, a, a dark clay uh, area where the water has soaked up into the earth, so the earth has become dark. Hamia. So they're saying, how is it that the sun can physically set into a spring? But we know that the sun revolves around the earth, as it's got its own orbit, and the earth has got its own orbit as well. Therefore, how do we understand that? Now, the ulama of tafsir have said, Ain in Hamia refers to, like we've just said here in the translation, uh, an area which has become dark, perhaps clay, perhaps, you know, dark. Uh, because of the fact that it's that the spring is bringing out water and the earth surrounding that spring has become dark. So he was walking in that direction, walking towards the west, and the story of the Quran is that he starts off going to the west, or he's in the west, and he's heading towards the, the area where the sun is setting. And then the next incident in, on the same page about the Quran he goes to the east and he finds the people who are being tested by Yajuja yeah, Majuja at that time. Therefore, what we can clearly understand from this <clears throat> is that he is heading towards the west and it appears to him, because he's heading in that direction, that the sun is setting into murky water. It doesn't mean literally murky water. The, the, the sun is setting in front of him on the horizon and it's going down into what looks like falling into the spring but obviously that's not what's understood anybody who's seen the sun set against the horizon then it, it looks like this the, the sun is going into the earth but like we said uh, both the sun and the earth are moving therefore it may look that way and again when a person understands it that way then it's then it's quite obvious but you see there's other things that are being mentioned by the ulama of tafsir which add not only to the obvious meaning, but also add to the uh, uh, the message and uh, the eloquence of the Qur'an. Now, one of the things that comes about is that there was uh, a, a Jewish rabbi, a priest, and he became Muslim and his name was Ka'b. Rahimullah. <coughs> uh, and Ka'b describes that in the Old Testament in their book, it's described that the sun sets between al-ma'i wa teen, that the sun sets between water and clay. So the wording that has been used in this ayah is similar and it confirms, and as we find over again in the Qur'an, that this Qur'an confirms the truth that has been found 
in the messages of those before. So it clearly shows that this is not something new. And there are many examples of that in the Qur'an. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the possible explanations that have been given by the ulama of tafsir is that this wording has been used in reference to what has been said in the Old Testament. Others from the ulama have said, Fi Ainin Hamia, Fi Ainin Hamia refers to a hot spring. So if you look at the translation, it says black muddy, and then in, in brackets it says, Oh, or hot water. A spring of black muddy or hot water. So now we've explained that Ain in Hamia refers to the black, uh, you know, the clay like substance that's surrounding the spring because of the fact that the water keeps coming out of it and it's become dark, it's become a bit mouldy, etc. Uh, and that's a description of the spring itself. But what we learn is the reference uh, that, uh, that seems to be made because of what we find from the Old Testament, but also the clear understanding is that he was heading towards the west and he was you know, heading so far west it looks like the sun is setting in front of him because he's got the horizon there in front of him. Um, but another explanation from the ulama of Tafsir is that Ain in Hamiya can refer to, and there's another qira'a, another form of reciting this ayah, fi Ain in Hamiya. Hamia. Now, Hamia refers to hot water. Hamia refers to hot water. And this has been mentioned by uh, ulama from the companions such as Ali and uh, Ibn Abbas and Hassan al Basri, etc. Now, why is this difference important, or is it of any is it of any importance? If we were to say that it's a dark earth surrounding the spring, then we get an understanding of that having some kind of relationship with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Dhul Qaynan could see, and also because of the wording that we find from the Old Testament. But if we say it's a hot spring, fi ain in harra, meaning, meaning a hot spring, uh, then it changes the meaning. Because it's not a description of the earth surrounding the spring anymore, it's a description of the water. So it seems as if the, the sun is setting into the spring directly without the sun setting into the spring and the earth surrounding it. hope that makes sense. The Ain in Hamia, if we were to say that it's Hamia refers to the earth, the darkness, and the Ain is the spring, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that he... Uh, it appeared as if the sun was setting into a spring and the earth surrounding it. But if we were to say fi ain in hamia refers to the uh, the hamia and it refers to a hotness of the spring, as in the spring is hot, then it's a description of the spring and there is no description of the earth surrounding the spring. So it made it look like as if the the, the sun is setting into the spring itself. Now the question is, one of the other objections that could arise is that the earth despite its distance when it is setting it won't appear as if it sets into a spring even if the spring is quite big it won't appear as if the sun is setting into a spring um, the answer to that is twofold number one it is not far-fetched for a person to say that the sun partially sets into the spring and partially not because in the Arabic language if a person mentions something uh, in its in its general sense in its holistic sense it doesn't necessarily mean that some of what he has mentioned is included so for example Aisha radiallahu anha said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast the whole of Sha'ban the whole of Sha'ban but we also know from other narrations is that a few days before Sha'ban would finish, before the, the month of Ramadan, he used to stop fasting, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when Aisha radiallahu anha said that he used to fast the whole of Sha'ban, it's not literally the whole of Sha'ban. He used to fast 27, 28 days perhaps. Therefore we learn that when she says the whole, it doesn't necessarily mean all parts of it. Therefore, if the sun is setting into a spring, it doesn't necessarily mean that the whole of the sun is setting into a spring and it seems that way. I mean, a person can now clearly understand that he was walking towards the west 
and he's seen the sun setting and it's going down on the horizon and it's going into a spring uh, and the, the spring has been described by surrounded by mud around it or the spring itself is hot. And some of the ulama have said that there is a way of reconciling. But I mean, we don't want to go into that all right now. The, 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 the point is, is that it doesn't necessarily mean that the sun is setting on the horizon and completely disappearing into the spring. However, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he said, Ain here refers to a bahar. Ain here refers to a sea. Meaning, he was walking towards the west and he came to the coast and he saw the sun horizing against the sea and it looked like as if the sun was disappearing into the sea. Now with that, we can clearly understand that this is something that we can easily identify and relate to. That A person sees that, you can Google it and you'll see pictures of it, of the sun setting and it looks like it's setting into the sea. So, some of the ulama have said uh, the, 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 the Ain refers to a large area of water. Some of them said, no, it's an actual spring, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the, the sun entirely was going in to the spring. Uh, but what happens is, is very unfortunate, is that people, when they try and pick out bits from the Qur'an, whether they are Muslim or not Muslim, they lose the the point of the guidance they lose the point of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say to us and this is very unfortunate that you will find people when they read the Quran they have that as a methodology they look at you know wordings they look at semantics when they don't actually look at the hidayah and the guidance and the nur that is found within it so Imam Sa'di when he was explaining this ayah he was actually saying that the emphasis is not on whether the sun is setting into the into the sea or not. The emphasis is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this king, Dhul Qarnayn, a great deal of goodness. And Allah made it easy for him to travel to the west. Uh, at that time, it wasn't easy. But what did he do with it? <clears throat> he used it to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to spread goodness, and to remove corruption and oppression which we are so much in need of until today, where we are seeing that corruption, oppression, and injustices, and ignorance, and all of these different things are filling up the earth at an alarming rate. Allah is telling us, He moved with ease with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah gave him this. بَلَغَ بِهِ مَغْرِبَ الشَّمْسِ حَتَّى رَأَى الشَّمْسِ فِي مَرْئِ الْعَيْنِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the ability to go towards the west to the extent that he was on the horizon making it look like the sun was setting right in front of him and the only thing that was between them was the water. And this is the ni'mah and the favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to him but he used it to spread goodness. And this is, uh, I think, answering the question, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Quran Rabi'a Qurubina, that He makes it as a spring for our hearts, as a reviver for our souls. Wa nura sudurina and a light that illuminates our chests, wa jala'a ahzanina wa humumina. And by this Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes and eradicates any kind of sadness and anxieties and worries that we have. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us this way and to keep us firm on it. For us and our loved ones, Hadawallahu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.